So uh, the I think it's called the Grace Call processor mm -hmm. uh, introduced last year. It's uh, you know there's a bunch of measures of performance. We're talking mm -hmm. about horses. Mm -hmm. It seems to outperform 368 trillion operations per second. Seems to outperform Nvidia's Tesla T4 system. Mm -hmm. So these are just numbers. Mm -hmm. What do they actually mean in real world performance? Like what are the metrics for you that you're chasing in in your horse race? Like what do you care about? Well, first, the, so the the native language of you know people who write AI network programs is PyTorch now. PyTorch TensorFlow. There's a couple others. Do you so, think PyTorch has one over TensorFlow? Or is it just a I'm not an expert on that. Okay. I, I know many people who have switched from TensorFlow to PyTorch. Yeah, and there's technical reasons for it. And openness. I use both. Both are still awesome. Both are still awesome. But the deepest love is for PyTorch currently. Yeah, there, there's more love for that, and that that may change. So the first thing is, when they write their programs, can the hardware execute it pretty much as it was written, mm -hmm. right? So PyTorch turns into a graph. We have a graph compiler that makes that graph. Then the, it fractions the graph down. So if you have big matrix multiply, we turn it into right size chunks to run on the processing elements. It hooks all the graph up. It lays out all the data. There's a couple of mid-level representations of it that are also simulatable so that if you are writing the code, you can see how it's going to go through the machine, which is pretty cool. And then at the bottom, it schedules kernels like math, data manipulation, data movement kernels, which do this stuff. So we don't have to run write a little program to do matrix multiply because we have a big matrix multiplier. Like there's no SIMD program for that. But the, there is scheduling for that, right? So the, the one of the goals is if you write a piece of PyTorch code that looks pretty reasonable, you should be able to compile it, run it on the hardware without having to tweak it and and do all kinds of crazy things to get performance. There's not a lot of intermediate steps. Right. It's running directly as written. Like on a GPU, if you write a large matrix multiply naively, you'll get five to 10% of the peak performance of the GPU, hmm. right? And then there's a, bunch, there's a bunch of people who published papers on this and I read them about what steps do you have to do? And it goes from, pretty reasonable, well, transpose one of the matrices, so you yeah. do row order, not column ordered, you know, <clears throat> block it so that you can put a block of the matrix on different SMs, you know, groups of threads. But some of it gets into little, little details, like you have to schedule it just so, so you don't have register conflicts. So the, 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 the they call them CUDA ninjas. CUDA ninjas, <laughs> I love it. To get to the optimal point, you either write a pre, use a yeah. pre, written library, which is a good strategy for some things, or you have to be an expert in microarchitecture to program it. Right, so and the so, optimization step is way more complicated with the GPU. So our, our goal is, if you write PyTorch, that's good PyTorch, you can do it. Now there's, as the networks are evolving, you know, they've changed from convolutional to matrix multiply. If people are talking about conditional graphs, they're talking about very large matrices, they're talking about sparsity, they're talking about problems that scale across many, many chips. So the, the native, you know, data item is a, is a packet. Like, so you send a packet to a processor, it gets processed, it does a bunch of work, and then it may send packets to other processors and, the, and they execute in like a data flow graph kind of methodology. Got it. We have a big network on chip and then 16, the next second chip has 16 ethernet ports to hook lots of them together. And it's the same graph compiler across multiple chips. So that's where the scale comes in. So it's built to scale naturally. Now, my experience with scaling is as you scale, you run into lots of interesting problems. Yes. So scaling is a mountain to climb. Yeah. So the hardware is built to do this, and then we're in the process of... Is there a software part to this with, with Ethernet and all that? Well, the you know the protocol at the bottom, you know, we send, you know, we, it's an Ethernet phi, but the protocol basically says send the packet from here to there, it's all point to point. Mm -hmm. The header bit says which processor to send it to, and we basically take a packet off our on-chip network, put an ethernet header on it, send it to the other end, to strip the header off and send it to the local thing, it's pretty straightforward. Human to human interaction is pretty straightforward too, but when you get a million of us, we could we do okay. some crazy exactly. stuff together. Yeah, it can be fun. <laughs> so is that the goal is scale? So like, for example, I have been recently doing a bunch of robots at home for my own personal pleasure. Uh, am I going to ever use TenStorrent or is this more for? There's all kinds of problems. Like there's small inference problems or small training problems or yes. big training problems. 
What's the big goal? Is it the big infra- uh, training problems or the small training problems? Or is well, it both? one of the goals is to scale from 100 milliwatts to a you know, to a megawatt. You know, so like really have some range on the problems. And the same kind of AI programs work at all different levels. So that's yes. the goal. The natural, since the natural data item is a packet that we can move around, it's built to scale. But so many people have you know small problems. Right, right, but but uh, you know, like the, inside that phone is a small problem to solve. So, do you see Tensorm potentially being inside a phone? Well, th- the power efficiency of local memory, local computation, and the way we built it is pretty good. And then there's a lot of efficiency on being able to do conditional graphs and sparsity. Mm-hmm. I think it's it's it, for complicated networks that want to go into small factor. It's going to be quite good, um, but we have to prove that. That's a that's a fun problem. And that's the early days of the company, right? It's a yeah. couple of years, you said. Mm-hmm. But you think, you invested, you think they're legit. Yeah. Hence you join. Yeah, well, join. that's. Well, it's also, it's a really interesting place to be. Like right, the AI absolutely. world is exploding, you know? And I looked at some other opportunities like build a faster processor, which people want. Yes. But that's more on an incremental path than mm-hmm. what's going to happen in AI in the next 10 years. Yeah. So this is kind of you know, an exciting place to be part of. Yeah, the revolutions are, will be happening in the very space. That and then is. lots of people are working on it, but there's lots of technical reasons why some of them, you know, aren't gonna work out that well. And, and you know, that's, that's interesting. And there's also the same problem about getting the basics right. Like we've talked to customers about exciting features. And at some point we realized that, with Bisha and I were realizing they wanna hear first about memory bandwidth, local bandwidth, compute intensity, programmability, they want to know the basics, power management, how the network ports work. What are the basics? Do all the basics work? Because it's easy to say we got this great idea, that, you know, the crack GPT three. Mm-hmm. But the, the people we talk to want to say, if I buy the so we have a piece of Express card mm-hmm. with our chip on it. If you buy the card, you plug it in your machine, you download the driver. How long does it take me to get my network to run? Right, right. You know, that's a real that, question. It's a so, very basic question. So, right. yeah, is there an answer to that yet, or is it trying to our get our goal to is it? like an hour? Okay, when can I buy a test for it? Uh, um, pretty soon for my for the small case training. Yeah, uh, pretty soon, months. Good. 